Land Image here with DeeDeeStamps.com. I want to welcome you to my stamp room this afternoon on this really cold day. So today in our week, what we've had here in, in Red Lodge is it's been uh, sub-zero. I think this might be day four. So today's high is like 10 below. Um, and it's been like this all week. So the dogs are a little stir crazy and they just wanted to go outside. And I don't like to leave them out very long. So um, I'm sure that they will be winding at the door shortly. So bear with me with that, but they, it's been a long week for them. Um, and this, uh, just a second, I'm checking my phone to make sure I got, I've got it on here. Hi, Sanford, do I have with you? Yay, I do. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure we were live and um, make sure that I can see comments and see who's out there. So if you're out there, give me a little shout out and let me know. But today we're going to do some stuff with the Amazing Life stamp set. Um, this is one of those stamp sets that I actually earned for free, or I got for free at on stage when they had it. But it's one of those that's very intriguing to me. I just think it's got a lot of potential. There's a lot of things going on in it. And um, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to make a St. Patrick's Day card because I had a customer, Susan, who hopefully is watching today. And she... Um, Asked me yesterday about St. Patrick's Day cards, and then I came. I pulled this set out like an hour ago to figure out what I was going to do. So we're going to work with that, and then I'm going to show you how they made this card for the most part. I'm probably not going to do everything they did, but I'll explain that when we get there. So hopefully, oh good. So it looks like Norma's on and Pat's on. Great. So we are using the rectangle stitched shapes framelits. Okay. So let me say, amazing life. And then the rectangle stitched framelits. And it's a bundle, and if you want to save 10%, you can do that. That also earns you a free celebration set. So just so you're not aware, I take some of my framelits out of their packaging, and I've got it on a little ring, and I actually hang them up on a pegboard I have in my stamp room. And so like anything that's the, the stitch shapes, the ovals, the layering oval circles, those kinds of things, I do this just because it's easier for me to get to them. Now, I'm not thrilled with how this one turns out. The rest of them look great, but what I think I'm going to do is split these off into shapes that match up with cards and then the shapes that are the rectangles and kind of different looking. I don't know. I don't. This is working because it's out and I'm using them, but um, anyway, just so you're aware, that's how I, that's how I store my, my framelits. I keep the envelopes just in case I decide that's not the way I want to do that. Okay, so we're going to use the Amazing Life, and I'm going to show a couple things today, a couple different techniques, but to begin with, I want to show the um, St. Patrick's Day card. So I'm going to use my Stamparatus, and I will be honest with you, sometimes I forget to pull my Stamparatus out and use it, but I do love it, and I love some of the techniques you can do with it, and this particular project that I'm going to do is going to use a technique with the Stamparatus. So I've got my cardstock, and I cut it four and a quarter by five and a half, and just so you're aware, I've got this little sheet of scrap paper. The foam is in there. And I'm also, I've laid down my, um, it's not called a craft mat. Somebody remember what this is called. But anyway, I, I just laid that down there because it, then I'm able to get all the corners, no matter where I put those stamps. Um, and this piece of paper is just there, too protect that black mat. And I'm using the foam mat because that stamp, that stamp set that I'm using is photopolymer. And I personally, when I use my Stamparatus, I always put my cardstock up to the corner. I don't know. That's just easier for me. I can check it. I can constantly make sure it's up in the corner. I find it really difficult to lay it down and measure and tape. Um, but that's just me. I like to keep things kind of simple. So I'm going to pull out. Here's the stamp. Oh, here I was looking for I was looking for a, um, <laughs> a, wood, a block, but I'm going to use a stamp rise. So to do this first card, what I'm going to do is, um, gosh, I feel so discombobulated. This was the first card that I made, and I want to show you how you can make that look. So I stamped it and then took it back. Um, several times. And so you're just going to lay your stamp. This is funny. Oh, I know. 
sorry, I can't believe how discombobulated I am. Anyway, I'm going to show you this way. So I'm going to lay my stamp on there. You can see it. I have it. It's actually upside down. Upside down to stamp. I'm going to attach it to my to my um, stamparatus. Open up, and I'm using Colony Clover. It's funny that it was so. I just did this card, so I can't believe how discombobulated I got there. For a moment. Okay, so I'm stamping that down, and then pulling that up, and then I'm going to move plate what down one hinge so this is called hinge stamping stamping it down and moving my plate down stamping it down and I can do that all the way down my card like that and you will see that I get that hinge step look so it's it starts out full strength and then takes it all the way back. And you can still see it up here real lightly, but not too much. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off, and I'm going to bring in this little clover. I'm actually doing this card for Susan because she was asking me about some St. Patrick's Day stuff yesterday, and I couldn't find any in the catalog. And then I opened up my, or I picked this stamp set up today to play with and realized that it's got a great thing for St. Patrick's Day. So I wasn't planning to make this card, but thought, oh well, let's answer Susan's questions and show her what I can do. So there you have it. I just did this little this little shamrock. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside. Now I came in with my Call Me Clover blends. I love the blends. I love everything about them. They come in pairs so you can get a dark and a light, but I'm going to use the light for this one. And because I used classic ink, I can go ahead and color with these markers and it won't bleed because the, art, the markers are made of alcohol and the classic ink is water-based, so they, they don't mix. And that's one of the things I really like about the blends is that you can use all of our various classic ink colors and it gives your project a different... Can you not hear me? Can anybody hear me? I just saw that Diane Rupert said, I hear no video. Hopefully, oh, it was a silicon mat. Thank you, Michelle, for pointing that out. I knew what, I knew what it was, it had a name. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and color in with my blends. Okay, well, Nona can hear me. Turn up your volume. like that. So there is just a really quick, quick, quick card. And then one of the things that I did, one of the things I like about the blends is I'm going to take some pearls that I had left over from one of my paper pumpkins, and I'm going to use the, this is actually the darker one. I liked the, the look of this lighter, or darker one, because you could really see the, the green pearls. Let's put them on here. See how nice and Call me clover, but I will do a couple more because I have a. Oh, I like to use. I do like to use the brush tip when I'm doing the my pearls. So once I've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and use my pickup tool or whatever this is called. I like to pick up my. Uh, a little bit of that adhesive on the end of that, and then I can place them where I want them. And actually, because I use alcohol ink, they dry fairly quickly. And just add a couple of pearls. And you can just see oh, what the heck, let's do one the last one too, just so you can see the difference. Let those dogs in. Anyway, you can see the difference in the pearls, how the, the light and the dark. Just a second, let me open the door for them because I don't want them to freeze out there. Come on. Come on, Petra. Come on. Where's Freya? Freya. Are you here. There we are. Okay, go on. One, no, go lay down. Okay, so sorry about that. 
I knew it was going to happen, but I can't leave them out there very long. Sweet. So what I did with this is I actually, this is a four and a quarter by five and a half. I trimmed it down by a quarter of an inch and then added one inch strip of the um, designer series paper that coordinates and then added it to uh, Call Me Clover cardstock. So this is called a monochromatic card. And it's one of the easiest cards to do because nothing really, I mean, nothing, you have, it all coordinates. It all looks good. Monochromatic always looks good, but just a really quick um, good luck card. And then let me show you another one I did. Same technique, only I actually, I'm going to show you how I did this one because this is, again, a monochromatic card. I used the same products, just gave it a different look. But I'm going to show you how I did this with the darker stamp in the middle. And that also was with Stamparatus. So let me get this set up. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm looking for my cloth to wash up. So. What happens is I, I get started and then I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I have a mess. I have a huge mess in my room right now, and it shouldn't be this messy. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this good luck, and I'm going to lay it here. And I'm laying it right... Sorry, my husband just called. Am I still live? Yeah. Okay, so I'm laying it right in the middle, making sure that it's straight. And if you want to, you can pick it up. And then you can see there's a grid here. I can see that that's a pretty darn straight line. I'm going to call it good. Um, and then, again, I'm going to open up that Call Me Clover ink and ink this up. And just so you're aware, one of the things I've done is my phone is actually holding this up a little bit. Sometimes I'll put a stamp case under there to hold it just to give it so it's, so it's flat. I just find it easier. So once I've done that, I am going to stamp that. Good luck. Pull it off there. And then I'm going to bring it down and stamp it again. And bring it down. Stamp it again. But that's how you get that ombre look. And now the next thing I'm going to do, because I want it now to go back up, the easiest way is to flip it over. Take off your stamp, line it up. Now I lined it up here, which I thought was kind of a cool idea because you could actually see through it. It's very easy to get it lined up where it's supposed to be, or close to where it's supposed to be. Pick it up, and it's not going to hurt it to ink it again. So ink that up, make sure everything is lined up. Ink it down, and it's going to be very dark, as you can tell. And then just moving your plate. And it, to me, it just gave it a much darker look. I kind of liked it. Um, but that's how I did that technique. So I was able to go up and down um, from the middle. And then what I did on this particular card is I took the dark Call Me Clover blend. And I colored in this one. Like this. I'm kind of watching. So if you have questions, I think you could ask them and I might be able to answer them. As long as everybody doesn't do it at one time. And then the next one I did in the light colored Call Me Clover, and this is what I like. You can see that that second generation of stamping is matches pretty darn good to um, the light Call Me Clover. Now, I'm not sure if that works on every blend. I, this one it did. But it's kind of nice because it really blends in there well. And just brings in a great color. A couple of super easy. Do the same thing up here color in this one too. And then the, the top and the bottom one I did not color in at all. Emily, this is from the stamp set called Amazing Life. I'll show it to you here in a second. It's 
It's in the occasions catalog. I don't want to get too messy because I might want to use these cards. <laughs> so anyway, and then the last one I didn't color in. So then on my actual card, I did the same thing with the clover. I stamped the clover in the middle and then down and then back in the middle and back up. And then I colored those same colors. And I actually did the pearls. So you can see I've got a dark call me clover pearl, a light call me clover pearl, and then a white pearl. And then I tied on some call me clover ribbon. Again, the monochromatic card makes everything look good because it all coordinates so well. This is one of those things that really shows Stampin' Up's coordination. Oh, that's not what you want to see. I want to see this one. So those are the first two cards. I do have another card, so I'm just going to show quick because Emma Lou asked. It actually is from the Amazing Life stamp set, and it's there's the good luck, and there's the shamrock. And now the next card that I'm going to do, I'm kind of laughing because I think that uh, the UPS guy is supposed to be coming at any moment with an order for me <laughs> that I can't wait to get my hands on. Um, so if I get kind of excited. Anyway, so the next card I'm going to show is actually in the catalog, and it's this one right here. So how did they do that? So what I do is I look at the picture, Stampin' Up! gives me a post of a list of what products they use, and then I attempt to recreate it. But I will tell you on this particular card, I didn't totally recreate it because I, these, this happy here, they actually cut every letter out. With a, you know, cut it out and then use an exacto knife to get those out. And I just personally wasn't going to do that. So, I come in with the cards that I use. That's so Whisper White. This is um, Petal Pink. So this was a full sheet of cardstock. I cut it in half and I folded it in half. And then I actually cut out the, the stitch square before we got started. And then they used a couple of more scraps of color, which I'll show you how they did it. But it's uh, Pineapple. Punch, Poppy Parade, Granny Apple Green. So these are not colors that I would have normally put together, but I think that card is actually beautiful. And it's one of those cards that I did want to figure out how they did it. So I'm going to take, first what I did is I ran my cardstock through and punched out that, that rectangle using the die. And one of the things I like about these is that you get two Two things you can actually use for each cut. So if you look, this has a stitching in it too, and this is going to be great for another card. I'll use it for another background from another card. So I always save those. And then as long as I set it up correctly, and that's what I like to do, is just make sure that when you run it through, you have a similar border around it. I don't get measurements and get perfect on it. I just do what I need to do. I hope that makes sense. Okay, and then I'm taking a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half cardstock, and this is actually going to, it should fit right inside there, and I actually put it inside there when I first stamp, because I'm going to use, um, they use, I'm going to use uh, blends again, so I need to use the Memento ink, this Memento ink is is our black ink that doesn't bleed with the blends. Now, if I were going to use Stazon, and actually that's what Stampin' Up! did use with Stazon, um, because they use the regular markers. But I personally love blends, so, whoops. Just dropped my Memento ink on my floor. I just want to make sure that I have this good in ink. Now, I'm not using, I'm just using the clear block this time. And actually, I should have probably gone ahead and used the Stamparatus because if this doesn't get as dark as I want it to be with the Stamparatus, I can re-stamp it in the same place. Oh, did fine. I'm happy with that. So once I've got that on there, there are a couple of things I'm going to do. Oh, I guess I'll keep the ink out because I'm going to take those colors that I have laying here and a little flower stamp. And so... I need three of the, oh, that didn't ink up very well. I need three flowers in yellow. I need three flowers. You can see I have lots of scraps going on here. Three flowers in green. 
I'll just put those aside for now. And then I'm going to take this big stamp again, and this time I'm just going to ink up that banner. And that's going to get stamped on my poppy cardstock. And this is where I need to wipe off so that I don't get black ink all over my... Let me grab a tissue here. <laughs> all right. So what I did is I took this little banner here, and I trimmed it out. And it seems like a lot of fussy cutting, but it sure is pretty when it's done. And I'm not that into fussy cutting, so that's why I didn't cut out my letters. Do that. Put around my banner. I want to show you on this banner. So on this banner, there is a little open area. So there's your banner. And you can see right here where it's not a full line. It just has the top of the letter light. That's okay, because it's all going to line up when I lay that right over the top of that. So there's one piece done. Then I'm going to come in. And I'm not going to cut these all out because you guys don't want to sit here and watch me cut them out. But what you do is you cut out your leaves. And just trim out your leaves. And I just leave a section of the flower so that I know how to attach that. So pretend I did three of those. So on this one, actually, I came in with the Daffodil Delight, and just added some color into the middle of my flower, just to give it some dimension. And because I'm using a cardstock instead of our Whisper White, so I'm using cardstock with these blends, and it works, but it does take a little while for it to dry. So, and it does bleed out, so it continues to bleed out a little bit. And then if you if you want to uh, blend that in a little better. You can either go in with your pineapple or you can come in with your clear, which is the color lifter, and then blend it out just a little bit. And when this dries, it'll blend out so it's, you don't have that harsh line. So the color lifter is for a couple different things. You can move color around, you can um, if you have a spot or something. But I do, I like the I like the look of that. And then I cut out a flower, and I'm only gonna cut out one flower because you can know absolutely know what I did with the others. And these I do totally cut out. I keep going off screen, sorry. I'm just cutting paper. But just adding that little bit of marker. Now Stampin' Up used our regular classic markers. So the ink that they stamped with was stays on. And then the marker that they used was our classic markers. But like I said, I truly I did not do such a great job here. Trim this up a little better. I do a better job when I'm not on film. So anyway, there is your flower. You're going to take your leaf add a little adhesive onto there, and then these actually line up. There we go. That's how, I, that's how the flowers are done. And then this is actually attached to the card. Okay, so now we're going to take the inside of the card. And this time we're going to use the pedal marker. And I keep checking to make sure I'm still alive, but it looks like I am, so. I got bumped off a couple weeks ago and kind of made me paranoid ever since. But if I do get bumped off, just know to get back on my Facebook page. I'll show back up eventually. So I'm just using the dark petal pink and color in, in these letters. And like I said, the Stampin' Up! designer that made that sample actually trimmed out each letter. And I just could not bring myself to do that. Good for her or him. Um, that's what they get paid for. But I truly just liked it colored. And if you want it to be even a little bit darker, 
once they're dry, you can go back over it again and it will pick up a little bit more color and make it a little bit darker. So you can actually do some shading even what, with just one blend. You know, if I just colored one side, it will blend out. So once I've done that, and I didn't want to make this too difficult, but the easiest way that I found that this works is to take your card, and I'm going to lay it inside here. Just a little bit bigger than, okay, so once I've done that, then I'm going to come in with the corners. So we actually did some stamping here with the pebble paint too. And I'll do this one first. Turn the blocks. Everything is falling down. I can go here. Okay, so here is a block, and I've got that corner stamp on there, and I'm going to come in with the petal pink. And the actual stample, so once I've laid this in here, where I want it, where it's going to end up eventually, I'm going to ink up the corner. And I can actually see where I'm stamping, so I can stamp right through that corner. And I'm going to do it on both ends of my card, like that. And then I can pull that out. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the other corner. So here's another corner stamp. And again in the petal pink. And this time I'm going to line it up on these corners. Now my first card that I did, I did all four corners, and then I realized that Stampin' Up! only did the two corners, so that's what I'll do this time. And then this is a little, can you see a little scallop on there? And that one gets placed. And you get great placement because it's clear, so you can see exactly where you're stamping. So that's done. So then this piece I'm going to bring in, <laughs> I'm going to bring in my trimmer. I'm just going to show you quickly what I did. So I know that this is pretty darn close to fitting inside my card. And so if I take it and take just an eighth of an inch off each edge, and then I can put the card together here shortly. So I went ahead and took off an eighth of an inch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my actual card base and using some of the mini dimensionals, so these are just the, the little tiny ones. So I wanted to bump this up a little bit from, the, from this card so it's really nicely framed. And then I'll put a dimensional in between just so that it has a a little support. Like that. And then I'll pull off all these. Make sure they're sticking. <laughs> okay, so once I've done that, then I'm going to take my card base and actually line it up and then it's, it's pretty even on the inside as to, as to your, your card and there is your card base and it's bumped up a little bit and then I took my banner and again with many dimensionals stuck a couple on there and I'm going to line this up right with that and that just gives it a bit of a bit of oomph. And then here's the the flower goes on with. I just put a dimensional right on the flower, and I actually put the dimensional into the frame, and then the leaves are flat. And then I sh I'll do another couple flowers. And then the last thing was just to add a little bow tied with the linen thread. And so that was the finishing touch on the card. And I just think it turned out cute. I love I love the technique of coloring. On the flowers with the yellow card or the pineapple cardstock, and then a little bit of the daffodil just to give it some dimension. And I like the green. I didn't realize that the the leaves were actually not colored. I thought they were colored, but no, they're cardstock. 
So some of this is called paper piercing, or piecing, excuse me, paper piecing. And like I said, I wasn't so sure about cutting out that happy, but it, I love this card. I love how it turned out. I think the sentiment is awesome. And um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great card. So my plan is to take some pictures of these cards. Get the, sorry, I was trying to get my ink pad shut. I'll work on that later. Clean my mess. My plan is to make, take some pictures, get the measurements up for you, and uh, show you what I did. I did want to, the last week's winner, I forget, I, you know, I, I put everybody's name in a hat. Anybody that comments and anybody that likes, loves, or even is not happy with my video, I put in, on Facebook, I put in all of you guys into a drawing and pick a winner, and you'll notice up in the description that Diana Knapp is the winner. So Diana, you'll need to let me know which stamps that you would like. I will get that out in the mail to you. Postage code for this month, this month is right here. I've got a great tutorial um, using, using Gear Garage um, this time around. I do know that Stampin' Up! has a second release coming out next week for celebration. In fact, that's what is getting delivered to me today to play with. It's some, there's some great products coming out. Um, some free products for celebration starting next week, and then March 1st is some great products using coordinates that coordinate with some of the celebration stuff. So if nobody has any questions or anything, I'm going to say goodbye. I hope you guys are staying warm. And I will speak with you soon. Take care.